Hi, my name is Olaide Agbola, and I am an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here, and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Olaide Abola is a transformational Nigerian entrepreneur and finance executive who has driven impact across multiple corporations and in various roles. Corporate finance, asset management, investment banking, real estate, and now lifestyle development. He is a financial expert and bred investment banker with diverse experience in the full array of investment banking and wealth management services. He holds a Master of Engineering degree in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Sheffield and also holds a Master of Science degree in Finance and a Diploma of Finance from the prestigious Imperial College Business School in London. A man who anchors his values on passion and trust, Olaide communicates impeccably with crystal clear vision for the future is now an inspiration for the people across Nigeria. He has inspired others by his various achievements but also by his attitude. His mandate is to make a lasting contribution towards creating a better world. Laide Agbola is the co-founder and CEO of Purple Group with a portfolio that includes Purple Maryland, formerly Maryland Mall, Purple Lecky, and other residential developments as well as lifestyle brand and products. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Laide. A pleasure, Fab. We've been at it for two years. Yeah? All right, finally we're here. All right, so like that you um, attended the FACO International Secondary School in Agege, Lagos State. Uh, tell me um, a little bit about your preteen years and uh, growing up in Lagos. Lagos, Lagos, for me, Lagos is um, very key. Lagos gave the foundation uh, of who I am today. Um, uh, my preteen years, I probably left Lagos when I was about 15 or something like that. Um, but prior to that, you know, for me, I didn't rock Lagos as much as people like yourself. <laughs> um, I grew up in Agege. My parents, um, my dad was an eye flying working class um, uh, chartered accountant. Um, my mom was a teacher. Nice. So I spent a lot of my time reading, mm. um, probably over reading. <laughs> Oh, wow. It was three and one. Wow. Um, um, I was always waiting for the next two years, right? Mm. Um, and that's partly because my mom, mm. my mom was a teacher. Um, and so I always had um, some sort of also teachers. Mm. Um, most of whom I remember really, one or two I'm in touch with. Um, and yeah, so my, my growing up, Routine years were definitely full of just uh, education, really. So it was academic focused. It was, it was pure okay. academic. Amazing. Was so, <laughs> so you would uh, you would later leave for the United Kingdom, um, where you attended the University of Sheffield, and uh, bagged your uh, bachelor's degree, uh, firstly in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. So tell me, uh, what informed you know that choice of course of study? Actually, I, when I left. At 15, I actually went to the Bellabus College in Brighton, Sussex. Mm. Um, then I got my place into the University of Sheffield, uh, where I enrolled for a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, but on getting to my end of second year and commencing my third year, I was on the first class one. So um, uh, I think I played too much at it because I eventually <laughs> came up with a 2 1, um, which really got me uh, upset. I'm an extremist in, in all the things that I do. Um, 
so I did mechanical engineering, then I was actually asked by the university to then proceed to the master's mechanical engineering, which was the first year in which we were going to do it. So I was one oh. of the first set of people that went through a four, straight four-year program into the master's in mechanical engineering oh, amazing. at the University of Sheffield. Hmm. Um, was at the time one of the best mechanical engineering schools in the United Kingdom. Hmm. And what informed that background was uh, actually Mr. Ushegmo, who is an engineer. Hmm. Um, and of course, those were strong role models around me at the time. And of course, I wanted to be like them. Um, and I knew I had what it, take, what it took to be like them. Um, so I went down the route of mechanical engineering. I, I did enjoy it, but when I finished off, I now realized that if I wasn't going to be the best in this, then I'm not going to do it. So was that what informed um, you now proceeding uh, to get another master's degree at Imperial Business School in Finance? A major pivot. Exactly. Yes. So the lack of not obtaining the first class in mechanical engineering and not going into design specifically. Because I worked within a group. In my group was Benjamin Coleman, mm. who is now a top design expert, was Michael Thorogood, top design expert, uh, was uh, Parandup Singh, who is now an MD actually, was knighted by the, by the Queen. Mm. Um, and four of us were in a study group, essentially. Mm. And those were the people that I rubbed shoulders with. A couple of them got a first class. So we're all on track. So finishing out the two one and missing it by a few points was actually very disappointing for me. So that, and one thing I learned in that process was that I then went on during that period. I elected to do engineering business with Professor Ridgway, Keith Ridgway, which was one of the best engineering business scholars in the UK mm -hmm. at the time. He worked, he did work for the Rolls Royce and this oh, like that. So. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't know you, but it was one of the reasons why he pivoted. Hmm. He had fancy cars, he was driving <laughs> money, <laughs> but, man, it was mm -hmm. just uh, good. And at the end of it, I said, if I wasn't going to be a design expert, then I would elect to do the engineering business side. Hmm. Um, so I'm finishing, I took a sabbatical year at one the role in an election uh, at the University Students' Union to be the International Students Representative, representing all the international students in the university. And by the way, you were the first, first Nigerian. The first Nigerian yes. to take that role. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was the second or third black guy to take that role. Uh, the first, if I recall, was a Togolese guy called Romeo Chacha. Uh, and I, I ran for elections. And he actually came up with a poster, he came up with a slogan, breaking the ice. That was quite fun. Mm. And we took the union by storm. And that's practically because they had never seen anything. We brought out the African bongo drums. We had wow. Africans drumming all over the university. They had never seen this campaign style <laughs> at the university. Very aggressive, mm. very African, very indigenous. <laughs> and we won the election by a landslide. Fact, we won it on the first count. Wow. Um, at some point, we also, they had to also get rid of some of our votes because the, the English and the non international were voting in an election that we weren't, they weren't supposed to because they just thought, you know, we just love this we guy. We just like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to vote anyway. <laughs> um, so it was quite an interesting period, and that really informed my direction. and at that point, my, my, the momentum was changing. And I got involved in the student union side of things and then also got involved in the business side of student union. Mm. And one thing that triggered me in retail was, was Coffee Republic, which we introduced into the student union. Coffee Republic? Yeah. Okay. That was like the first of the so Coffee Republic. First set of Coffee Republic, Republic retail stores. And we introduced that into the union. And that was different. Because the union ran everything internally generated.
limited. But this time around, we're rolling in. We're now bringing in a third party into the, into the scheme. And we have quite an interesting uh, turnaround. And I achieved all of the things I wanted to achieve. So I'm sure the next person that followed up on me would have had a budget reduction because, because of that. <laughs> they <had turned laughs> from, uh, hmm. from an expense account hmm. into also a revenue generator, a single revenue generating account. And hmm. that's those, the last two years at the University of Sheffield now set me up to say, you know what, I think we need to go down the business line. Um, so you won in a landslide victory uh, to head and run you know, the International Students Unit of the Students uh, Union. Would you say that was your first shot uh, at leadership? Um, I would say internally I knew that leadership uh, drive had always been there. I mean, I got to the University of Sheffield probably... 16, 17, and one of the very first people I met was a, a gentleman called uh, Charles Eteri. And we were very, very good, good friends. And after three months, we were just bored and just said, you know what, this city needs a little bit of shaking up. <laughs> So we got involved in the African Caribbean Society at the time at the university. So we threw a house party. We were staying in, we were staying in um, hostels. So we didn't have a house to throw the house party. <laughs> so I think we went to one of the senior guys at the university and said, you know, you've got to give us your house. I don't know how we convinced them to give us. And we need the African Caribbean Society back in to throw this house party. And, you know, we've got to invite everybody. Why are the Kenyans on one side and the Zambians on one side and the Zimbabweans on one side and the Nigerians on one side? We need to all come together and form a unit. And that really broke the division between the Kenyans, the Nigerians. And thereafter, everybody came together, relaxed, had fun. And we even had people from other universities coming in. And then that set the trend for house parties over the next three, four years. And you know, I, I, I say this in a small context of house parties as an example, because leadership comes in different forms. You know, being able to bring people together is actually a fundamental skill that you need in, in leadership, being able to um, get everybody going because it's in that in, in relationship that you build and some of those relationships that we built then are some of the relationships that we are highly dependent on mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and if you never had those years of just total relaxation then you perhaps have, would never have been able to really create this depth of relationships mm -hmm. um, that we all latch on to these days. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure, sure building the relationships uh, continued well into uh, your time at Imperial Business School. Uh, what were your key learnings uh, from that time at Imperial? Um, in, at Imperial, it was very intense. It was almost 10, 11, 12 months of just high intensity, round the clock. I mean, there was literally no room to play. And coming from someone that I enjoyed playing, uh, <laughs> um, that set the tone for me in terms of being able to go to 2, 3 a.m. That's where that capability to stretch your working hours beyond, over and beyond the ordinary when required. Uh, that was where I began to, to see that the human mind and the human spirit, uh, there's a lot more you can get achieved and get done if you just completely set your mind to it. It's like complete focus. Um, and that really uh, gave me that propellant to, to try well at the beginning of my investment banking career. Most African students in the West usually have an option 
to remain gainfully employed in the country of study. But this was not to be the case for Olaide. After a very intense academic program out in the United Kingdom, coming back to Nigeria was inevitable for him. But how did he make that move? So you would later move back to Nigeria. Um, please do share with me, you know, possibly using the timelines about your career as, as an, an investment, investment banker. banker. So in 2002, um, later part of 2002, I spent a lot of time living with a very good friend of mine whom I had met at the University of Sheffield. He had just rounded up his um, master's in information systems yeah. and information management. Uh, so we had spent the last three, four, four years or so together and he had moved back to London. And he was staying at his father's house, so um, I stayed, I, I, I went to live with him. <laughs> I don't think his parents knew or my parents knew. <laughs> but you went out. <laughs> because they were in Nigeria. And so we lived together. And in that period, we we're no longer playing now. We're now strategizing on the direction investment management or investment banking or trades or is it entrepreneurship? How should we go about it? What should we do? What are the direction? And we did that probably for about four or five months. He woke up one day in 2003, and then he said, I'm leaving next week. I was like, what? What do you mean you're leaving next week? He's like, yeah, I'm going. So I walked with him from Paddington, where the property was, took his luggage with him uh, the following week, and went to the train station, and up we went from Paddington Station to Heathrow. And that was it. And I returned to his father's house. It's like, what am I doing? <laughs> All right, I'm going next week. <laughs> and that was it. Amazing. So from 20, 2003 um, all the way to 2007, what was going on at that time? Oh, my. Um, it's four years, right? Uh, 2003, I got recruited by perhaps the greatest investment banker, uh, Mr. Tedo Peter Said, mm. and up. And I joined the team in the asset management side of the business, IBTC, Investment Banking and Trust Company at the time, which is now Stambic IBTC today. Mm -hmm. And then we had a subsidiary called IBTC Asset Management Limited, which was led by one of my greatest mentors uh, till date, uh, Mr. Ian Kasani. I remember we walked round the clock. It was late hours, it was heavy lifting, it was a combination of doing the investment management analysis, uh, the, the reports which were manual at the time, and we had hundreds and hundreds of customers and clients, both institutional and, and individual HNIs, and we had to turn out all these reports, do all these analysis, take all these orders uh, for trading, for non-discretionary uh, uh, positions. Um, and then on that team was uh, a very good senior brother of mine now, uh, uh, Mr. Shea Yoshike and Mr. Laudu Martins. Mm -hmm. And we're all in this, it was almost a four or five man squad. A um, few months down the line, maybe a year or plus or something. My phone rang, Mr. Yinkasani called me. Anap wants to see you. Like, what did I do? I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> what did I do? So, the panic. But what had happened was that he had actually recommended me to, to the boss, to the CEO at the time, to say, I think we have a talent in there. I think we could get some, something more out of this. Um, so he pulled me up. I went up to his office. Of course, I was scared and concerned, like, have I done something wrong? He said all this nice stuff and then gave me the Companies and Allied Matters Act, the SEC um, rules and regulations, 
and Investments and Securities uh, Act. These are fake documents. It's like, read everything and give back to me next week. Like, so he had drafted me uh, to the core team of corporate finance, which is the investment banking and all of those things that I was reading uh, and learning about at the time. Uh, and he drafted me to report and work with uh, one of my senior mentors, uh, Ms. Yewade Sadiko, who is currently the executive secretary of NIPC. Hmm. Okay, so all of this experience that you've garnered um, had culminated in you, you know, being appointed uh, as a technical advisor to the federal uh, minister of finance in Nigeria. Now, tell me, how did you secure, you know, this role, and what was your mandate uh, within this role? Um, from IBTC, I felt I'd done everything on the investment management and investment banking side of the, of, of, of the capital markets. I felt I needed to understand the debt side. Um, at that point, I had not even discovered real estate. Um, at the time, there was a strong character called Sonia Yere. It's now a very strong pillar of support for me. And it was to set up UBA Global Markets, which was um, going to be the investment banking section of UBA. And I knew it was a debt guy. And I knew it was coming in uh, at the time to look at securitization and mortgage refinancing and all of those exotic debt instruments. We are not playing vanilla, right? So I called him. Actually reached out to him and I said, this is me. I have worked in the strongest place. I've done this, 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 this. And the only reason I want to work for you is because I want to lend debt. So I was the third person to join that team. Eventually, I left UBA and went to uh, Alifia Capital. Uh, their focus was going to be real estate and private equity. So you can see I went from, yes. and then that's where mm -hmm. I knew my risk capital was, was huge. It was pretty high because you spent just three months at yeah, I spent just three months at least, yes. and then I got this um, appointment. I think I went to see my dad on a Sunday, and he opened the newspaper and said, ah, Baba Lola, he's been appointed minister. So we, he placed the call to him right there and then said, ah, hello. So I spoke with him. I think I spoke with him at the time as well. And I said, oh, congratulations, blah, blah. If you ever need anyone, I'm available. In fact, I'm willing to come and come to Abuja and work with you. And work with you because this is a national assignment. We got talking for a few more weeks. Uh, and the issue was, oh, the government can't afford you, and how do, how do we get this sorted out so you can join the team at the time? Uh, so I was started with the responsibility of finding a sponsor, uh, so to speak. And for the next three and a half years, I, I was um, working with the, with the Minister of State for Finance at the time, under the Yaradua Jonathan first um, administration. My remit was to cover capital markets um, and special duties for the, um, for the minister at the time. So I was still doing a lot of stuff with regards to policies and regulations and those things around the Nigerian capital markets. And, and that you know, really then set me up for a cross-section of understanding and relationships um, that I developed in a very short seven, eight years, which was intense, basically. I had 20, 2003 all the way to about 2010. It was just intense uh, in terms of the experience, the people, the various diversification of understanding from capital markets, public service, and to, to real estate and, and which as an alternative asset class. And all of the people that I met along the ways 
along the way. That was just phenomenal. I don't think the last part of it uh, and the opportunity that was given to me by both the minister and as well as uh, Mr. Kumagwa and Mr. Doze were fundamental into creating a new human being for the next decade. Hi, my name is Olaide Abuola and you too can be an under 40 CEO.